Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard, and guess what? We have a special guest again, Mr. Robert Niles with Mr. Rash Guy. For those of you who've been subscribed, Robert of Theme Park Insider has been on the channel before a couple years ago. How you been, yeah. Robert? How you been? been we're, uh, we're keeping busy, aren't we, man? Ooh, it has been nuts busy. the last couple of months. Like, my goodness, I had to reshuffle my video uh, schedule after even just the new Universal logos came out today. I'm like, oh, man, all right, let's try to push this and push that. The my Universal Ice Age logo? The Universal <laughs> Ice Age logo, that's right. Now completely Central America free? <laughs> yeah, I know. They, they say, no, screw you, Central America. You're going to put our little word right over here, right over your consonant. That was funny. And we have, of course, the Vash guy, freshly squeezed of OG55, talking all about Disney and their corporate changes on their channel. How are you, Vash guy? I'm yeah, doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Uh, uh, when uh, uh, Wizard, I, I do appreciate you inviting me. When you said Robert Niles, I was like, ooh. I want to be part of that show. Uh, <laughs> respecting your work uh, greatly, sir, over the years. So uh, I do appreciate uh, you making the time and coming on. Thank you. So today, my is so much to talk about, and we can't even get to all of it. But we're going to get to the big ones. Robert, my goodness. I know I went to Super Nintendo World with a rash over here. But you, Ben, how, what did you think? Good? Uh, what are your good, bad, and any thoughts about it? I got to tell you, this has been the land I have most been looking forward to over the past the past five years or so. I mean, I kept waiting and hoping for Japan to open up so I could get over there and see the original one. But mm -hmm. by the time it did, it was just like, well, might as well wait for Hollywood at this point. Sure. So I, I was coming in fresh. I really tried to avoid a whole bunch of spoiler videos. I mean, we had some preview stuff up on our side. Everybody did, but mm -hmm. I really wanted to experience. And I was there the first day of the soft opening. I was there for, you know, every one of the, what, four or five openings that they had of that <laughs> and, and loved every single one of them. I love the fact that it's basically, it's a big playground. I mean, it's, it's when you say video game come to life, I think a lot of people think about something that's going to be really heavily screen based. Mm -hmm. And this isn't, it's all practical, but it's still mm -hmm. that same type of just joyful play that all of us, you know, whether it was Donkey Kong or Mario Kart or however we were introduced to Nintendo that have enjoyed over the years and gave the opportunity to go into that environment, be the player, not with a controller, but with your own body, punching blocks, mm -hmm. uh, spinning stuff. You know, um, racing against the clock, all of that. Uh, that's the stuff that really sticks with me, that is truly unique. I mean, I like the Mario Kart ride. I think it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, But a lot of people have got interactive dark rides at this point. Mm -hmm. But the land itself, that's the thing. The the, the Golden Key Adventures, the the, the Bowser Jr. boss battle, I think Love it's it. really clever the way they put that whole thing together. And it's just a gas every time I do it. And I just, I love that land. Um, I, I still want to go back to Japan and see the original mm -hmm. there. I can't wait for the Epic Universe iteration of this. Um, I can't wait for Donkey Kong and all the other stuff we're supposedly getting with it. Mm. But for right now, I absolutely love that land. Um, and, you know, can't wait to get back out there and do it again. Did you eat a, what's your favorite food at Toads? Did you eat a Toads? I'm sure you did, but yes. Oh, is that one for me? Oh, Toads Cafe. Did you eat a Toads oh. Food Cafe? Yeah, I, I ate at Toads the very first day it opened and absolutely loved it. I thought the piranha plant salad was just beautiful. I mean, I'm all for like more vegetables in a theme park, and what they did with that mm -hmm. was amazing. Um, then I went again during the pass holder preview and it was just like the kitchen had gone off the rails at that point. It was just way too crowded. Stuff was coming out late mm -hmm. and it just, it wasn't as good as it was the first time. Uh, I have not actually been able to get back since to see if they've hit a rhythm with it, particularly since they've gone to the full menu at this point. Uh, but you know, the Mario burger I had for the first time, that was the best burger I've had at universal in years. It was fantastic. And I was just mm -hmm. like, I you know, this is going to be my go-to place to eat. Um, now, logistically, it's still a little bit of a pain because you have to get in early and get the reservation yeah. 
QR code and all that stuff. So uh, I think when things calm down there and mm-hmm. every annual pass holder in town has been through and done it once, uh, that that that's going to be my go-to place uh, for food for a while again. Uh, but right now it's uh, it's a bit crowded there. Hope for maybe some it rainy is. days and the crowd down. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we went on a rainy day, and me, uh, me and Vash guy and OG, and it was still pretty crowded in Toad School. It's Toad School, yeah. actually. It's yeah. Um, but we had we liked our food as well. You had a little uh, Dre had a bit of the Luigi burger, and yeah. uh, what you have? The, you had the garlic knots or something. Garlic right? knots, tiramisu. Tried a little bit of the cupcake. Tried a little bit of uh, uh, your dish, uh, wizard. I mean, the food is um, honestly, it it really is excellent. And uh, it's not just the uh, the taste, but the presentation. It's just adorable. It is really, really well done in a setting that is just. I mean, it's straight out of a video game. It's it's really, really mm-hmm. cool. Great theming there. And and, and I love the operations that they've got there. So you're yeah. not going to have a bunch of people just come in to sit down and kind of watch the show on the walls and everything happening. Uh, you you got to go through the line. You got to get your food. They'll seat you in the in the space in there. So. Uh, there's no problem getting a seat to eat, which can be a problem at a lot of counter service places at a lot of different theme parks. So I absolutely commend Universal for what they've done with the operations once you order at Toadstool Cafe. That's the way that I think theme parks, restaurants ought to be run. Yeah, it's it's, and, it's almost like a cross between uh, uh, counter counter service and table service. I mean, it's yeah. mm-hmm. I, I do agree with you. Efficiency, core principle. I like it. Yeah. What did you think, Robert, of the prices of the toads, or of soup in general in general, but in the price of the food, the cupcake, the popcorn buckets? Um, yeah, I, 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 I avoid popcorn buckets like the plague. <laughs> um, I do not have an eBay store. I am not a reseller, so <laughs> I, I have no interest in popcorn buckets. Uh, I will take a picture of them when they drop out, but uh, yeah. Um. The food actually was not bad in terms of the price. Um, honestly, I love the fries. I, th- I thought those were cr- wonderful. Um, uh, and so in terms of, you know, basically what you're talking about is a sit-down theme park meal. You know, not bad. I could deal with it. Uh, the 40 bucks for the uh, power-up band, I think, is going to make people's eyes wa- water a little bit. But it's mm-hmm. a one-time investment if you keep bringing it back. And it lasts forever. Uh, well, it seems like it lasts forever. Yeah. I'll see how badly I beat mine up. But uh, <laughs> the only thing with that is um, if you've got something, it's a slap bracelet, mm-hmm. but it's a top heavy sp- slap bracelet. So if you can get something that helps kind of keep it tied there, that mm-hmm. keps it from flying yeah, off sometimes. Flies if you get too off. Enthusiastic with punching the question box <laughs> uh, while you're in the land. That's, that's the only complaint I'd have about that. And honestly, I mean, when you look at the price that Disney's asking for the Magic Band Plus, which mm-hmm. doesn't really i mean it's basically it's a ticket that allows you to play a game of marco polo in uh, galaxy's edge um much better value from universal's interactives whether it be the wand or the power-up band yeah mm-hmm. yeah is. yeah dre what do you think about interactives between disney and universal i know you come to oh. that before well, that's the kind of disappointing thing about uh, Disney, especially when, as it relates to Galaxy's Edge. A lot of, I mean, Galaxy's Edge was really kind of built from the uh, as kind of a core foundational principle of its of its uh, of its design work through the development process as being a, a, a land that was going to be interactive. It was going to, you know, feature a lot of, um, uh, you know, playmaking and so forth. We heard, oh well, well if if you go to the cantina, you're going to have a bounty hunter, you know, tap you on the shoulder. And, uh, <laughs> hey, maybe you're you're your actions in the land as it relates to like Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, for example, you know, might actually follow you and trace you and all that. We saw the Legends of Frontierland test uh, that was, uh, you know, seemingly going to be integrated inside Galaxy's Edge and actually, you know, those rooms and corridors and so forth where that implementation was going to be still exists, just it still exists, but just underutilized. So mm-hmm. it was really kind of uh, disappointing to see Galaxy's Edge open and just be limited to the app. And like you said, uh, Robert, with the, uh, with the, with the magic band and the game of Marco Polo, right? I just think <laughs> Universal has just done a superior job when it comes to the interactivity uh, with lands uh, in the modern era. I understand Disney kind of maybe started that trend uh, with Toontown and so forth back in the 90s, but 
for a modern land, <sighs> the implementation at Nintendo and Wizarding World, for that matter, far superior. I mean, basic lesson in business is you gotta like under promise and over deliver. Absolutely. And Disney mm -hmm. just did the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. They promised mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff with Galaxy's Edge. I mean, I was there during the previews. I heard them promise this stuff to us. It's yeah. not like this, these were all rumors that bloggers just made up. No. This was stuff coming mm -hmm. from the highest level of Disney. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and they didn't they didn't deliver it. And what they did deliver was on a secondary app that is a battery hog um, mm. with universal they've got the scoreboards and everything integrated into the universal studios hollywood app there's no play right. universal and, app and the land you itself. To download. yeah and then the land itself you can check the you can check the leaderboards there if you want to so you don't even need the app correct so it's just a much more customer friendly experience all the way around with interactivity at universal at this point absolutely 100 percent. I, I couldn't agree more now with Speaking of Toontown, you had the chance to ride Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Did, yes. Right? How did you like that? Did you write did you write the Florida version and this one or just Yes, I've been one? on both versions. Um there are some Any subtle preference? differences in there. Uh, but they're basically the same experience. And right. you know, if Disney's falling down on interactivity, they are not falling down on creating practical driven dark rides. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an absolute masterclass in creating a dark ride. I think what they did was, um, yeah, I don't know if I remember a while back when uh, Mystic Manor dropped at Hong Kong Disneyland and we saw the first POVs of that online and everybody just lost it going, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I want this in a park. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that spirit is in Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Mm. Uh, which I finally have learned to say. I have to pause a little bit. <laughs> Runaway Railway is a mouthful. <laughs> Even the lead designers of it have trouble saying Runaway. <laughs> so um, but it's 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 a trackless ride. There's a lot of just cartoon chaos in it, which is absolutely on point for what the character of Mickey Mouse is right now Especially, with the shorts yeah. that the kids are seeing. Um, yep. you know, oh God, I sound so old when I say it. The kids are seeing these days! <laughs> but literally children. I mean, this is the Disney Junior stuff that well, they've, sure. they've done. Um, and I, I love I love the new Mickey shorts. They're absolutely delightful. It really gets back to the spirit of what that character was before he became a corporate spokesperson. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that Disney has leaned into that. I love what they've done with Runaway Railway. Um, I'm happy that they brought it to Disneyland. I'm happy that they brought it in a plussed up form in Disneyland because oh, the absolutely. queue here puts Florida's queue to shame. Yeah, it is yeah. a walkthrough attraction in itself in Anaheim. Definitely worth it. In fact, um, uh, yeah, just just go through. I mean, I know they've got the, the 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 individual lightning lane with that, but at least once go through that in the regular oh, queue so that you see everything. Like, well worth it. So interactive. It's great. So good. So good. I mean, the 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 <laughs> uh, what is it? The 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 you know callbacks to uh you know these great uh, times in mickey's history the whole three mm -hmm. eras kind of thing was really really well done i thought uh some of the effects in the queue itself are really really uh quite sensational i understand yeah. it's been having some problems especially in that can a concession area but i think those things will be oh, alleviated in time uh, nice there are so yeah. many jokes in the concession area so <laughs> many they are. <laughs> hey, that chocolate and candy, you got to sell that stuff, dude. Come on, what are you doing? I mean, that stuff looks amazing. Hopefully. I have a little information I can't share yet. But... That's all you got to say, Robert? I, I got gotcha. hey. But the context there matters. <laughs> there matters i do agree with you but it, it's 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 a wonderful cue um and it really kind of uh, to me as a theme park fan harkens back to those old school you know great cues that we love so much from our childhood yeah. uh indiana jones adventure star tours and of course mm -hmm. roger rapids cartoon spin right next door so it's it's it really really cool and like you said blows out florida uh, out of the water oh and, and as you said with with roger rabbit right next door man that is going to be a great one two combination there absolutely I, mean, I i can't wait for uh when the land opens back up again you can go do those two rides back to back to back to back to back and just <laughs> spend the whole day in toontown i'd be True. happy yeah, and eric gosh it looks great what do you think about the new toontown the loss of the fountain replacing by the grass the centennial park the 
extra elements. What do you think? I, it's an upgrade I think that they needed to make. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, I, I, I did get the opportunity to go through on a construction tour uh, uh, not too long ago. Um, can't really talk about that too much uh, until that information uh, lifts from embargo, but just from so what people can see stuff? from the you know public side of the construction wall mm -hmm. at this point, that nice new big uh, kind of fake grassy area that they've opened mm -hmm. up in front of uh, Roger Abbott. I mean, the concept art shows that that's going to be continued through the rest of the land, mm -hmm. but they've still got a bunch of interactive elements that they're going to be putting in there. Um, they've really worked hard on on building a playground that is inclusive. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Ages ago, when I was writing uh, for the LA Times, I wrote about a playground in Griffith Park called Shane's Inspiration. Uh, oh, I remember that one. The uh, the idea that you can create a playground for for people, you know, kids with disabilities, kids in wheelchairs, kids with you know, kids on the sensory spectrum, issues. whatever sensory issues, um, uh, uh, kids with with hearing impairment, sight impairment, uh, you name it. Uh, just so the idea that any kid in any situation can find a way to play in a play environment. And Disney has embraced that with uh, the new Toontown. Uh, now, how will the public react to that? Will they embrace it? Will will people go? Yeah, this isn't fun for for me. I, you know, we'll see. Uh, but I, I, you know, I'm well beyond my uh, my uh, child playground age. But even that land looks fun to me as a grown up, just as a Very space cool. to be in and hang out and and just feel like I am in Toontown, which is a wonderful, wonderful space. And that's I mean, the thing. From the Oh, I was gonna say, from the concept art, it looks even just fun to me. It looks like you can run around and you know, go along to these play structures. And something that Dre and I actually noticed, they actually he pointed it out to me, was in the concept art, he noticed a lot of people in wheelchairs, like in mm -hmm. like drawn and con So it's good they actually took that into account and did that. Like that seems on purpose because they made it inclusive for everybody to play, which is cool. Yeah, it, it is very cool. And uh, moreover, I mean, this is, uh, you know, uh, Robert, you talk about, you know, embrace or not embrace. We will see, obviously. But hey, it's something needed to change. I mean, uh, yeah. Team had kind it's of been fine. whittled down, whittled down, whittled down mm -hmm. ever since its debut in, in the early 1990s. And now, you know, it's 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 kind of getting a new lease on life. And that's really, really cool to see. And, and one of the things I'm kind of excited about, which is mm -hmm. really, really geek nerdy, very, you know, theme park insidery, mm -hmm. is honestly advances in paint technology mm. when you think good. about it that thing got that's so great. faded over the mm -hmm. years that they're going that's in with 2023 color. paint now that can actually hold color in california sunshine for longer than three months so the idea that toontown is still going to look like toontown as opposed mm -hmm. to some dilapidated thing outside of vegas in the desert <laughs> that's exciting okay. just on itself that now is. you've got that confirmed by the uh, creators, Robert. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll see. <laughs> We're hoping, but I'll I'll say this. I mean, if you look at you know what they did with um, like Pixar Pier, mm -hmm. that has not faded anywhere near as much as I thought that that was going to yeah, be faded. That's, that's true. If you look at the stuff that they've done with actual colors in the past five or five years or so um it's become pretty standard now with disney that they're going to these more modern paints that are going to be able to keep their pigment in the sunshine over time so i have no doubt whatsoever that that's going to be the situation with uh with toontown and Okay. You mentioned Pixar Pier. Next to that, we have a new project, San Francisco. Uh, mixed reactions with the. Uh, did, are you on Twitter much? Do you do you follow those? That? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not like deep into Disney Twitter, but you know, I'm on there. Because um, uh, so you've probably seen the mixed reactions of why do we need this or this is great type of going on there. I think it looks kind of cool. I mean, it's an, an adding more Disney to the Disney in California type of thing hold on oh looks like we got a screen share popping up i'm excited for really the main element of course here the uh that you wrote up sir here the uh the san francisco golden gate bridge whatever it's called um what do you think of this overall project you think it's necessary 
I think it. But it's uh, cool. for, for people who were uh, original uh, Disney California, I'm sorry, Disney's California Adventure fan, <laughs> who are missing nice. the Golden Gate Bridge from the, the front entrance, I think this will be a nice little so back there. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a Tory gate. It's not the Golden Gate, but, you know, it's, it's a call out. Um, I think clearly the memo has gone out that everything has to be IP. And mm -hmm. if it's not IP, it needs to be made into an IP. Yeah. Um, and there was no making, there was nothing in the pipeline that was going to make, um, you know, Pacific Wharf into a Disney IP, but they <laughs> had San Francisco just sitting there and mm -hmm. it's underutilized in the parks. And as much as I would like to see them lean into doing a San Francisco land on the scale of what they're doing with Zootopia in Shanghai, Mm, that ain't I mean, happening right now. Yeah. So we get this thing. I think it'll be a nice decorative makeover. Uh, mm. If it's an excuse to upgrade the food service in the land, that That's would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Yes. And if we get a Baymax and with the Baymax meet and greet, okay, I'll take this. I mean, yeah, I'll take it. And it adds a nice new kind of icon to California Adventure as well with this the callback to the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, yeah. You I know, it's interesting. It'll Robert, be a photo you, spot. You uh, you mentioned you mentioned IP and 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 how uh, uh, these parks and these little different areas had to reflect that kind of IP. The the, the call has gone out. And I think you're right. I mean, um, actually on Twitter, Eddie Sato was actually asked about Eddie Sato, famous Imagineer, worked on mm -hmm. Disneyland Paris and uh, projects in Disneyland uh, proper, Nuts Bray Farm, and so forth. He was asked about you know would we ever get an original attraction again? He's just like, hey, look, probably not because if only for these big corporations these big companies acquiring so much ip well they have to actually uh you know be able to leverage that and capitalize on that for their shareholders right and justify those purchases and those agreements yeah i think the only chance we have to get an original ip attraction in the parks is if it is scheduled with a concurrent rollout of a disney plus series about that mm -hmm. same property which at some point I could see them doing that. I mean, I could, mm. you know, they could go day and date, you know, with instead of, you know, theaters and Disney Plus, theme parks and Disney Plus. Honestly, they did that once before with Beauty and the Beast. Uh, if you think way back uh, at Hollywood Studios, that show dropped the same day as the movie premiered. Wow. So uh, they could actually do that. The thing is, that's a huge risk because uh, mm -hmm. theme parks are so capital intensive and you're not going to uh, you can pull stuff out of theaters in a couple of weeks. That park's going that attraction's going to be there for years. But if they found something that they truly believed in and uh please be something from Society of Explorers and Adventurers. Um, <laughs> that would be our best hope for getting a uh, theme park original IP um, you know, it's kind of going in the parks again. It's kind of interesting. Uh, that's why I, I did. Do you remember reporting about a certain concept for like a black box type attraction? The oh, yeah. Is you have a dedicated space in which, uh, you, you know, it has a footprint, obviously, but it's, you know, it, it's basically like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, but without, you know, anything on the inside, but it could provide a canvas by which you could promote things day and date, but not be married to them, let's say, and you could switch that over. Do you remember all that? Yeah, yeah. I this this idea gets kicked around a lot. I mean, remember at Universal Studios Hollywood, mm -hmm. DreamWorks Theater was supposed to have a rotating thing of different. It wasn't mm -hmm. just going to be Kung Fu Panda forever. Mm -hmm. How many years has it been? And it's still Ooh. Kung Fu Panda. Quite a lot. Uh, <laughs> True. Inertia is so powerful in theme parks. Mm -hmm. There are so many different. Th I mean, it's like having this. It's like having the world's greatest Lego set to go over to another company. Um, and you just want to keep playing. You play with one thing and you want to go over and play with something else all of a sudden. You don't want to keep going back and playing with the same box over and over again. True. And it's kind of hard to promote the same box over and over again. It's easier to promote something completely different on the other side of the park to get people to buy their annual pass or to buy their tickets next year. So. That black box concept, I think, is a great one. I think it's a smart move to do. Mm. But it's just like every time someone brings it up, I'm just like, yeah, but you're not going to stick with it. It's just going to become whatever mm -hmm. it is. It's going to be the permanent I thing. I mean, just like and the, it's be uh, on the same 20 year life cycle as everything yeah. else in the park. That's just like, so you true. know, rotating missions of Smuggler's Run, the change ups for 
Midway Mania, you know. Star Tours yeah. back in 1987. Uh, We're going to have new missions. Yeah. And, well, our <laughs> well eventually they did. Hey. They did. They did. But it took a while to get there. Well, like yeah, it was said. the same 20, 30 year process as everything else, you know? Right. And right. speaking of these IPs, there's a big one making the rounds nowadays uh, with a certain experience that Bob Iger uh, teased than D23 magazine says that this avatar experience could be as, as amazing as Disney World's. I know Bob Iger is doing a Q&A tomorrow. It probably has nothing to do and probably not going to mention avatar at all, but you never know. You never know what someone could ask him tomorrow in this that his Q&A, but what do you think this experience could be small, big, medium, and where do you think it would go? Uh, Disney is usually very precise about its language. So the fact that they're saying experience rather than attraction or land or park or something else that they would typically do tells me that this is going to be more on the lines of the sort of thing that we've seen from uh, entertainment in Shanghai than what we're seeing from Disney World. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be plussed up, I think, because they got to plus it up. Uh, but you know, the thing I keep coming back to, the obvious space for this would be um, the building that has most recently been used for um, uh, Launch Bay in mm -hmm. Tomorrowland, the old America Sings Theater. Um, just got the heck out of that and put some great avatar experience in there. And I think people would be very, very happy with it. You don't need to build the mountains of Pandora. You don't need to bring us Flight of Passage. Um, those all be wonderful things, but I think that's going to require um, park expansion. And that's waiting for the whole Disneyland forward thing with the city of Anaheim before I think that gets greenlit. But man, you've got that huge space sitting there in Launch Bay. Nobody cares about Launch Bay anymore now that Galaxy's mm -hmm. Edge is open. Right. Uh, in fact, it doesn't really make sense to have Star Wars on two sides of Disneyland. <laughs> um, um, uh, now, do you want to take Star Tours and make that into an avatar? type of experience maybe mm. that's in play as well interesting i don't know but tomorrowland is severely underutilized at disneyland right now and that seems to me um an actually theme appropriate because um, the thing about star wars in tomorrowland that always bothered me is it's a long time ago mm -hmm. in the galaxy <laughs> not tomorrow it's the past mm. pandora uh avatars tomorrow we could do we could do avatar in tomorrowland and you know so i'm i'm rooting for one of those things i'm also rooting for imagineering to have been working on this and not iger's little tease being the introduction of the idea to imagine oh, yeah. which would mean an additional two years of development before we actually see anything in parks so i'm hoping that something gets announced on this relatively quickly well apparently uh, which, oh yeah. go ahead go ahead robert Oh, no. I mean, I, I, I was going to segue into the uh, changes in Imagineering that we just got announced this week. That's, that's very true. And the, mm. it's, it's interesting that these two things would coincide like this. That's that's a very interesting thing. But uh, I, Iger is not wasting time making no, changes. No, he really isn't. No, he and is we not. Had, we had heard Wizard from our mm -hmm. sources that well, I expect March to be the month where things maybe get put on the table, maybe things get taken off the table and so forth. And now, I, I, you know, I mean, Avatar was obviously announced before this, so it's obviously on the table. But you got to look at some other things for sure. And with Bruce Vaughn stepping in, that is definitely a change of leadership, a change of philosophy, uh, with which, you know, we could be reaping the benefits of fairly quickly, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think clearly Iger wants to see more flowing from the creative side. Yeah. Uh, not mm -hmm. just the, uh, you know, Disney housing departments, uh, Disney housing developments in the desert that Imagineering <laughs> was giving us before, right. um, which I'm sure they'll make bank on. But uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is a storytelling company, not a real estate developer. So um <laughs> Bruce Vaughn helps change the direction of WDI back into a more creative, uh, creative space. And hopefully that's going to lead us to a lot more attraction ideas that can get people excited 
with more detail and more heft to it than yeah. the really blue sky stuff that we saw at D23 Expo. <laughs> <laughs> the what if segment. I love it. Um, well, it's interesting, you know, I mean, even this article says whatever, you know, while the details on the coming avatar experience at Disneyland remains under wraps, it promises to be as amazing as those found at Walt Disney World Resort. Big claim. The Disneyland Resort announcement has been a long time coming since Walt Disney Imagineers have been working to imagine more ways to bring avatar stories and characters to life since 2017. So I kind of, uh, uh, maybe doesn't you know, nail down your uh, question about whether or not, you know, how long this has been working for, but hey, at least they've been thinking about it for some time. Well, I mean, I, I, I love the folks over at D23. They do a great job, but their job is <laughs> hype, 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 hype. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, there's hype there. We'll, we'll, we'll see what it is. But uh, like I said, I mean, people are really waiting for some more substance to this yes. announcement. Um, yeah. And I think... That's going to be measured in weeks and months, not years. I don't think they can wait to D23 Expo I, I, 2024 yeah. to give us something on this. I agree. It would be I weird agree. to you drop this at Destination D. So, mm. you know, hopefully this is something that's going to be coming like this summer, some information for folks here on the West Coast. I, I, uh, I've been talking to, you know, Wizard because Wizard's like, oh, could, you know, he drop it here? Could you drop it here? And I keep circling back to the shareholders meeting in April. I keep circling yeah. back to, uh, hey, if, if Iger wants to really make a stamp on a company, on, on, on this company, as a kind of a, you know, new sheriff in town, kind of a, a kind of a, a headliner, uh, then he could announce major projects from, you know, all the different divisions as they now exist uh, as part of this new structure. And what better way than maybe provide more detail into this avatar experience? We'll see. Yeah. But I, I keep circling and back I mean, to that. I think that's smart. Yeah, he did say very soon, and it's what April's the shareholders. I mean, that would be that would qualify very soon. So I don't know, unless he's lying. So, but what do you think? I know back on the Twitters of Twitterverse that uh, someone started to be like, "Oh wow, is this Joe Rody coming back now that uh, you know Bruce is back?" What do you think about Rody and any other Imagineer that maybe that may have been? left because of Chapek maybe coming back, being convinced to come back. Well, I mean, I think I think Rhodey's basically retired at this point. He may come back in some type of consultancy position, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, he's happy up in Santa Barbara at this point and then playing with space planes and things like that. <laughs> um, I, I, I can't see daily shifts back in Glendale at this stage. I think the biggest issue that WDI has to deal with is the fallout of that um, decision to try to relocate to Florida. And I think mm -hmm. that cost them a ton of talent. Um, I think they're in the midst of walking back that whole decision at this point. I would be very surprised if we saw, uh, and in fact, actually the whole concept of a headquarters at right now, obviously Disney is a location-based entertainment company, of course. but uh, the pandemic proved that you can do a lot of location-based entertainment via remote work from people's homes. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to diversify the, the diversify your cast, mm -hmm. if you really want to go out and get the best talent available, if you don't want to bid against yourself for the talent, I, you kind of have to embrace a new a model where you don't have everyone sitting at a desk in Glen Glendale or Lake uh, Nona or whatever, but you've got people working for Imagineer all over the world, not just at Disney locations, but people in home offices wherever, uh, including Joe Rody up there in his new little you know, <laughs> uh, compound up in San Santa Barbara. Um, if Disney, if the reorganization that that uh, uh, Damaro promised that um, Barbara Buza and uh, Bruce Vaughn are going to be doing, if that includes more, you know diversification and where offices are cited, people working from home, you know, a global workforce for Imagineering. I think that could pay off in something really wonderful for them. But, um, you know, we'll have to, to, to wait and see what's happening. But uh, clearly there's a lot of movement happening in the industry right now. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of, you know, companies staffing up. So, Imagineering is going to have to get creative it, if it wants to get the best of the best. That's a very, uh, uh, very good point, actually. I mean, 
and and that's that's the kind of the weird thing is is you know we, we've had some stumbles let's say from Imagineering as of late you know and the, the two fireworks presentations that we got uh, <laughs> as part of the 50th weren't you know super well received now they're going to be gone in less than a year which is kind of crazy to think <laughs> about um uh or just over a year um i i you know, we 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 have uh, you know we have Tron, and you know some people have been arguing about that. I think it's going to be a real kind of a successful uh, yeah. attraction, but some people mm. have kind of been complaining, "Well, it's too short, it's too this, whatever." And uh, you know, there's obviously some controversy surrounding some other projects as well. I, I think it was a very a good step by um, Dusty Morrow, honestly, quite frankly, to 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 bring somebody back into the fold like Bruce Vaughn to kind of just settle things down yeah. if we're going to be ramping up i think it's a good move yeah absolutely and what do you think uh dre of uh, any uh rumors of joe or any major imaginers coming back you think they can just come in visy roles or just not come at all well i i think uh you would need some convincing and and honestly i i i you know, we made a video about the about the D23, uh, you know, update and so forth. And I said, hey, look, listen, you got Bruce Vaughn coming back. You know, who knows? Anything could happen. Right. And if this um, Avatar experience is substantial, maybe it's got a big budget attached to it. Maybe it's like, hey, you know, you get to work alongside uh, James Cameron again, John Landau again, and really do something for the Disneyland Resort. Uh, you know, maybe it's possible, but Robert, you make a good point here. I mean, he does have obligations uh, over where he is in his compound in Santa Barbara. So it's like, would he, how can you convince him to come back? We'll say Bob Iger and James Cameron, you know, they can be very um, convincing sometimes. So we'll yeah. see. Man, well, we shall see. Um, but wow, look at that. Thank you, everyone, for joining this lovely roundtable of a very quick but fun theme park chit-chat. Robert, always a pleasure to have you on the channel. Always well, happy to be here, man. Thank theme you. Theme Park Insider, he posts, he writes, like, all the breaking news as soon as it happens. Check it out. Link it below. Vash guys OG55 does videos like eight times a day, so you'll be able yeah, to catch one of them. And <laughs> and they're all like nice and meaty, so there's a lot of information in there. So check him out, subscribe, and they just opened up a new store, so check it out as well. It's like a long link, I forgot what it was, but I'll be it'll be in there. And one last question, Mr. Actually, no, no, no last question. <laughs> Subscribe and have a great day.